Hey everyone, you ever wanted to build the spare parts computer for your living room? Well I did one, let's check it out. All right, so I'm, I'm changing things up a little bit right now from where I normally film my videos. This is where I would normally play from my spare parts living room build. And uh, the living room build is actually pretty nice overall. There were a few new parts that I had to do with it. I call it the mini rig or the mini beast basically. Uh, most of the time. Anyways though, so uh, so let me show you what I got here right in front of you at the moment. I have my wireless keyboard and mouse that goes with that. These I bought new on eBay, uh, Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's a Viotech uh, Hockpec wi uh, wireless 2.4 gigahertz unit. Works pretty well. I can get, uh, I do sense a little bit of input lag when I play with it and uh, it, it it's not that big of an issue for a lot, a lot of the games that I play here in the living room. For FPS, uh, honestly, I, a lot of it goes away when I turn the, uh, the sensitivity on the mouse up and it has three different settings for that. So it's pretty usable in that regard. Now, I definitely wanna look into something like, uh, was it the Rock Hat Sova, something like that? It's a whole all-in-one unit, but it's wired. It just has like a breakaway cable that you can keep on the side of your table. And, uh, it seems really nice, but it's a little on the expensive side. And right now, a piece of plywood to rest on the armrest of this recliner, a uh, monoprice mouse pad, this keyboard and mouse does the trick pretty well. Keeps things nice and even for my wrists as well. I can just relax and play, and it's really nice. The mini rig, I actually generally like to set it up for my LAN parties, which are right here in this living room. And uh, in, when I have it set up, it's a guest computer, so it has all the games that, that we would normally play. Basically, you would just log in with your Origin or your Steam account, depending on the game that we play, and jump on in. And it's great because if somebody can bring like their significant other who might want to play, or, or let's say somebody doesn't feel like bringing their computer that day, or um, any situation where somebody can only stop by for a little while, so it doesn't make sense for them to break down their whole setup and bring it over. Works out great for that. The specs of the unit themselves, this is the, of the mini rig itself, this is where I, I'm really happy with how it turned out because I just didn't expect things to turn, to turn out this way. So basically, it was born out, a, out of a, um, a computer that failed for a friend of mine. It was a laptop that he had and it had an i7-3610QM processor in it, which is a pretty beefy processor. Ivy Bridge laptop processor for a gaming laptop. It's a great little guy. It has some, it's a 2.3 gigahertz base and it turbos up to 3.3 gigahertz, which uh, assuming that 3.3 gigahertz is a four core turbo mode, which it should be, um, uh, that's pretty good performance. That's a, it's a pretty decent number. Um, if you look at benchmarks and physics scores and fire strike and things like that, the processors, processor itself measures up to maybe like the Westmere era quad cores. The, even the, fa the faster ones, like the X5687 from my other previous videos, the i7-3610QM basically keeps up with it. And this is at something like 45 watt TDP as opposed to the 130 watt TDP that that one is. So they did manage to make things smaller over the next few iterations after that and uh, more efficient and this processor is a good example of that. So what I did when his laptop uh, broke down was I took it, I took the processor out, I sold the carcass of the laptop and that's the exact amount of money my friend wanted for the whole thing. So I basically got the processor at no cost and uh, I decided to build a computer out of it. It turned out that finding a motherboard for this processor wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, I found a few, like one from Supermicro. They're like $200. It was pretty cost prohibitive because I can build a mini ITX system with a brand new processor and a brand new motherboard from off the shelf desktop parts pretty easily and pretty cheaply in that range. It would probably be like an i3 or maybe an older i5 used on eBay parts, stuff like that. So I almost gave up on it. But then I started searching eBay a little bit more for this and it's uh, something like a socket 988 or a socket B2 as uh, you know, they use the names interchangeably with the numbers sometimes. And a little searching brought me up to a motherboard that was listed out of Israel, the country, yeah. And it was $35 to ship it, it was listed for $35 and I jumped on it. And I never heard of it, it's uh, Portwell Wade. No, Portwell is the manufacturer and it turns out that they're based out of California 
but they don't sell products in the US. Kind of funny to me. Um, they have a location in Fremont, and I believe that was their HQ, or at least it's their USA HQ. And uh, so I jumped on it. A lot of reviews that I found on it, there were other people who had gone this route with the processor, but it uses a QM67 chipset, which is a Sandy Bridge based chipset. And I was unsure if it would work with Ivy Bridge. I mean, technically it should, right? I mean, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge is just a tick and a talk from each other. And anything that supported one should support the other, at least with the BIOS update. Well, I actually got in contact with Portwell and they actually sent me a, it's a test BIOS, it's not an official BIOS release, but the test BIOS works fine. And it supported the i7-3610QM just fine. I did have to buy like a $1 processor for that, uh, for the like a Sandy Bridge based one so I can at least boot the motherboard and booting the motherboard slash the BIOS no problem and I got the the i7-3610QM installed and this, it worked out great it took like a month to get here from Israel of course it only has one memory slot it's an 8 gigabyte unit that I stuck in there DDR3-1600L and uh, only one expansion slot that's the PCI Express 16 and uh, and I ended up finding a GeForce GTX 770, an Asus DirectCU 2 unit. It's only a two gigabyte one though, but it's so far so good. And uh, I had a spare power supply that I had lying around. It wasn't modular, so my my uh, wire management was as good as I can get it without really going custom wiring and custom length and all that stuff. The primary point of this was to build it from whatever I could as cheap as possible because I didn't have a lot of money at the time. And I think I accomplished that goal pretty good. Um, the case I found was a Cooler Mastery Elite 130. And there are plenty of other mini ITX cases that I was considering and a lot of nice ones, all gaming and flashy and all that. But I wanted something that would fit in my living room okay. I didn't want it to be gaudy. I didn't want it to be crazy looking or stand out, stick out like a sore thumb. I went with the Cooler Master Elite 130 because it sort of fits in with my bookshelf and uh, the other equipment that I have there and uh, I think it worked out pretty well. I did find a few issues with the motherboard once it arrived, and it turns out that the pitch on the pins is a different pitch than standard. I believe it was a 2.54 pitch, something like that. So adding to my mess of wires that I had to take care of in there was the fact that I had to get a pitch adapter for at least the USB ones, because the front USB on the case was not compatible with it. The motherboard only had a USB 2.0 header, but the header was on a smaller pitch. Basically, the pins are closer together. So a standard uh, little USB head, the female portion that will go plug in, will not fit, will not fit at all. And I found a pitch adapter off of the, uh, I believe the website is moddiy.com, and it converted it to the, I believe it's three millimeter pitch, 2.54 to three. So I had to put a pitch adapter, and then from the pitch adapter, I had to get a USB 3.0 to 2.0 adapter because the case only has 3.0 up front, and I had to adapt that into it. So I had I went from like maybe needing this much cable to maybe this much cable through uh, through adapters and such, and uh, added a little bit of a mess. But pitch adapter to 3.0 2.0 adapter works fine. I got all use of my front USBs that way and that worked out great. There is no IO shield. I kind of got creative with my own, with using electrical tape. I've done it before, like with the X5687 build in the do case, and it looks fine. It'll do for now. I mean, I'm not looking at that part of the computer anyways, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, so there is that. And again, with the pitch being different, it made it very difficult to use the front panel pins. So I don't have really front LEDs or anything like that, but it's fine because in the living room, I don't want things blinking at me. I don't want things lighting up. So I got the power button to work. The power button fit perfectly. Uh, it's, it doesn't have room for other connections around it. You can just plug the power button in and the power button works. Push that button and turns the computer on just fine. Boots up normally. Everything is great. So I originally had it running with a 500 gigabyte 7200 RPM laptop drive, which was fine. I installed a bunch of games to it and and as I try to keep my library, library matched on that one to my main computer, uh, it started running out of space, of course, because I have a terabyte unit over there and this is 500 gigabytes. So it's like, uh, I'm getting close here. Uh, over Black Friday, I managed to score a uh, Crucial MX300 750 gigabyte for $119. That, that was a good deal to me. 
And uh, something I found out about, furthermore, with the, the Crucial MX300 is something called Momentum Cash. And that's something that if you guys have an MX300 uh, or possibly other compatible Crucial solid state drive, get the, uh, get the Crucial Storage Executive software, check if Momentum Cash is supported, turn that on. I believe that it improves performance a lot. It looked like it, like it did from the benchmarks at least. It was already fast to begin with, just to make it faster, you know, maybe it's not that noticeable, maybe it is, depends on the person, but I definitely like it and I'm going to leave that enabled because, hey, who want, who, who's going to turn down speed? <laughs> so um, I had originally built this computer back in 2015 and I've just sort of kind of kept it going along since then and, uh, you know, right now I believe it's where I want it to be. I may end up upgrading the graphics card because two gigabytes is probably going to be bottlenecking pretty soon, if not already. I did have a little trouble playing Doom, the new Doom on there, but a uh, clean install of the graphics card, especially after I uh, cloned it over to the solid state, the issue that I had seemed to have gone away where it would drop from 60 to 30 for, to frames per second, but um, I don't know, it, it went away, so good old clean driver installs, they do help out. So uh, the benchmarks on it are great. Uh, I'll have a link to that in the description. I have this mini rig connected to my Samsung 1080p 55 inch TV in my living room. And as far as I can tell, other aside from a few little issues, it runs everything great. If I'm gonna have any, any upgrade to do in the near future, it might be like a, like a better graphics card, maybe somewhere with four gigabytes of RAM at least. But the 772 gigabyte is holding holding well pretty, pretty good. I did run into some issues with Doom. Uh, but a clean install of the driver, especially after I cloned everything to a solid state, issue seemed to have gone away. And uh, the issue was that it was bouncing between 60 and 30 frames per second, which at least to me, I can tell the difference after that. After that, it's just, it's just something I didn't like, but issue went away. Now I can run 60 frames per second on high playing Doom and uh, it can run everything else that I've thrown at it without any issue. So it's a great little system. Something else that would be useful for it in the use in the living room, of course, being as powerful as it is, is a uh, like as a media PC, of course, with Kodai, something like that. Have some video add-ons, run some movies on there through Plex, however you want to do it. it. Has all the power in the world to do that, and that's pretty awesome. Um, I've got a, a 430 watt pow power supply on it. It was a thermal take, like I said. It's just an extra unit that I had lying around, and it's working out, especially because. it's Overall, it's low power. This processor isn't pulling nearly as much as it would on a desktop. So the, basically, the, the power supply is mainly powering the, the, uh, the graphics card. And uh, the graphics card is just hanging in there just fine with, with how I have it. The wires are a bit of a mess because I had to uh, use all sorts of adapters because the power supply only had a, a six pin graphics card connector. So I had to use that six pin with a six pin to eight pin adapter. And I had to break out the other four pin Molexes into their own uh, eight pin adapter because it has, uh, well, rather the six pin go to the two six pins to an eight pin and now the other ones are Molex to six pin. It's a bit of a mess, honestly. It adds a lot of extra length to the wires and you know, it's just kind of a mess, but I tied it up there as good as I could, and uh, it looks looks pretty good so far, I think. Anyways, though, so uh, yeah, overall, it's a great system, definitely. It's also fun to use it with uh, Steam Big Picture Mode. Big Picture Mode, it's like, this is what this is made for. It's basically a Steam machine in that regard, and Big Picture Mode with an Xbox 360 controller and a $9 or $10 Amazon Xbox 360 wireless adapter, it works great. It's meant for this, and it, it just you know it's really good working when it comes to that. And uh, so something else I like about it is now that I have the remote with it as well. I don't it's, I don't have it with me right here, but uh, using it with emulators and ROMs and things like that, and playing old school games, playing using it as a classic game station. It's all obviously overpowered for that, but it works great. And uh, we've played through a couple of games, me and my, my fiance, and she loves playing Super Mario and any of the Mario games. She actually surprises me with how good she is at it. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, it's a great little guy overall. Great for taking around the land parties. I've seen other people mod handles onto this because it doesn't have a handle. You just kind of carry it like this. But overall, it's easy, easy to carry. I got my own station set up here in the living room. I'm comfortable with it here. And it's a great little setup. So uh, eight gigs of RAM. 
It's got a uh, Portwell Wave 8321LU motherboard. I have all the information and the link in the description below. And uh, Thermal Take 431 Power Supply, Cooler Master Elite 130 case. Ooh, uh, a G Asus DirectC2 GeForce 770 2 gigabyte card. Uh, it's got a back plate. It's a really nice card, actually. Too bad you can't really see it, but you know, that's kind of the point in the setup. If you guys like this video, make sure to click that like button. If you didn't like that video, click that dislike button. Boo. But uh, leave a comment if you dislike it, and let's see what, what can we talk about. You know, I'm happy to talk about the system, and if you have any questions, uh, post them in the comments. Don't forget to click that subscribe button for more, and I will see you guys.